Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. Today we're going to use an HCO5 Bluetooth module together with a transistor that would act as a switch to activate or deactivate an RFID module which would then control a 5V 10A relay module to turn things on or off, like an electronic door lock, desktop computer, and a lot more. By the way, we have already used an RFID module together with a relay to turn a desktop computer on or off on a previous video which was posted last year. The purpose of that project was to add a security feature and use the RFID module and relay as our switch. I suggest to go and watch that first by clicking right here if you haven't seen it yet. Go on. Don't be shy. I'll wait. Okay! Now for this week's project, we would add a password protected Bluetooth module into the mix and control it by using a simple custom app. So that, even if someone duplicated your RFID card, they still won't be able to use, access, or open something that is protected by the RFID module because you have the key to activate it. It's like a switch for a switch. Or like a pseudo two-factor authentication process. Well, three-factor if you're going to use it on your computer that is also password protected, but you know. We're also going to make some pretty basic Arduino and Bluetooth module projects while we're at it. I also would like to apologize for the lighting, I'm still figuring stuff out. And as always, all the necessary links will be provided on the description down below. Let's go! Alright, before we start, here are the things that we need. Solderless breadboard. A full-sized one would also be just fine of course. A few jumper cables and hookup wires. A few resistors, 220 ohms, 1K, 2K, and 10K ohms. A 5V 10 amp relay module. I think if you will just control low voltage devices, a transistor would also be just fine. I just use a relay for added versatility. An HCO5 Bluetooth module of course. An MFRC 522 RFID module. An Arduino Uno board. And lastly, a 2N3904 transistor. Alright, now that we have gathered the stuff that we need, it's time to put things together. We're going to do some basic stuff first, of course. Okay, let's get our breadboard, Bluetooth module, and the LED which I forgot to mention before. Let's put the LED right here. Get the hookup wires. We're going to connect the red hookup wire to the 5 volt pin of the module, followed by the black one onto the ground pin, then the white hookup wire for the TX and yellow for the RX pin. After that, let's connect a 2K ohm resistor onto the ground pin and RX pin, followed by a 1K ohm resistor connected to the RX pin where the 2K ohm is also connected and we will connect that to digital pin 1 or TX pin of the Arduino later. Now, you might ask, why do we need two resistors on the same pin? Well, the answer is because those two resistors will be our voltage dividers. But why do we need voltage dividers? Because the operating voltages of all the pins of the HCO5 except the VCC is 3.3 volts. And according to the 80 mega 328p datasheet, the output high voltage of the Arduino is about 4.2 volts, which is evidently higher than the operating voltage of the HCO5 pins. That's why we're going to need a voltage divider. 2K multiplied by 5.0 volts divided by 2K plus 1K. 5.0 volts because the RX pin will be connected to ground. By using that equation, the answer would be 3.3 volts, which is the operating voltage of the HCO5 pins. The divider must be connected to the ground pin in order for it to work. The Arduino will be able to read 3.3 volt logic level correctly. So nothing needs to be done to the ACO5 output pin aka TX pin. Again, all the necessary links will be available on the description down below. Alright, now let's add another resistor. This time, the 220 ohms onto the cathode pin of the LED. Next up is adding some hookup wires to connect the supply lines together. After that, let's connect them to the Arduino. 
connect the red hookup wires to Arduino 5 volts and of course black ones to Arduino ground. LED anode to digital pin 8. Then, HCO5 RX pin to Arduino pin 1 or TX. And HCO5 TX pin to Arduino pin 0 or RX. Then, let's upload our code. To upload the code, remember to remove the TX and RX pins first, otherwise you will get some errors. Okay, so here is the uh, sample code for the first test. Click on upload. After uploading the sketch, reconnect the TX and RX pins. Alright, I have added some jumper cables onto the HCO5 pins for ease of access to the reset button. More on that later. In order for us to control the Bluetooth module, we would need an Android device. Either a mobile phone or a tablet would suffice. As you can probably see here, the HCO5 LED is blinking quite rapidly. It's because it's looking for a host or master device. So let's turn on our Bluetooth. See there it is. That's our Bluetooth module. Click on it to connect and depending on your module, the default password is either 000 or 1234. For this one, it's 1234. Click OK to pair. By the way, this is the custom app that I have created using MIT App Inventor. It's called HCO5 Heathen. You can either create one on your own or just download the one that I have created. I have already installed it as you can see. Link in the description. Please take note that this is an APK, which means that it may trigger your device's security feature and say that it is unsafe. But it's just a false positive. Don't worry about it. <sighs> okay, let's open the app. Then, click on Show Available Devices, just in case you have more than one module active. On this project, we will only use one. Click on the device that has the HCO5 name, and as you can see, the LED blinks much slower now. That's because it has found its pair or master device and is currently waiting for instructions. Now, let's see if my app would work. Click on Turn on RFID Reader. Well, obviously, we will use this app for the RFID reader later. That's why the button is named like that. And there it is. The LED turned on. Now, turn it off. On. It's pretty responsive too. Alright, so what else are on this app? If you click on the About button, you will see this. And if you wish to disconnect from the Bluetooth module, just click on Disconnect. Then, Close App. Okay, now that we know that our basic code and app is working as intended by turning an LED on and off, let's use the same code on something more useful. Let's step things up a notch and use a bigger LED bulb instead. We can do that by using a 5V 10A relay module. The connections are just the same. We just need to connect the signal pin from the relay to digital pin 8 of the Arduino and connect the positive and ground pins of the relay to Arduino 5V and ground as well. This S right here means that this is the signal pin. The middle pin is the positive voltage and the last one is the ground. After connecting the wires that needs to be connected, let's power up the Arduino. Open the app again, connect to the Bluetooth module, and there it is. After that, let's add the light bulb. I will use this extension cord. The wiring diagram is like this. Let's connect this one to the normally open terminal, and this one to the COM terminal. Screw it in, make sure it's tight. And this is the light bulb that we will use. Okay, let's get back to the app again. Show available devices. Connect. Hold on, let me turn off the lights for a second here. Alright, let's see. And there it is. It's like a bigger version of the one earlier. By the way, if you have watched some of my previous videos, you may have seen this setup before. This was actually from Arduino project number 9, or PIR motion sensor controlled relay. See, there's the PIR motion sensor. Click here to check it out. Okay, now that we have discussed some of the very basic uses of the module, I will show you how to change the default password by using some AT commands. We can do that by disconnecting the power source first. Then, connect the TX pin of the module to TX pin of the Arduino. Then do the same thing to the RX pin. After that, open up the IDE, create a new file, then upload the blank sketch. After uploading our blank sketch, click on Tools, Serial Monitor, 
set the baud rate to 38,400, that's the default baud rate of the module, and set it to both NL and CR. Then, press and hold the reset button while connecting the module to its power source. As you can see here, the LED blink rate became much more slower than before, approximately more or less than 2 seconds. That means it's on AT mode and ready to receive some AT commands. So let's type AT and press enter. When the serial monitor replied with a text saying OK, that means it's ready to receive commands. And if you want to view what the current default password is, OK, I know that you know what it is but just pretend that you don't, OK? Sheesh. Type AT plus PSWD question mark then press enter. It says here that the current password is 1234. Now, if you want to change the password, type AT plus PSWD equals double quotation marks and add your desired password. Let's say 8888. Then press enter. And there it is. It says OK. That means that the password has been saved or changed. I know that it's also possible to change the default name of some modules but unfortunately the AT command for that is not working on this one. AT plus name, question mark, see, nothing. Alright, now that we have changed the password, let's connect the power. Reconnect the TX and RX pins to where they were connected earlier. Then, reconnect the power. After that, let's get our Android device again. Connect to the module for pairing, and just to check if the new password has been saved, let's see if the old one would still work. Okay, type 1234, click OK, and there it is. Couldn't pair with HCO5 because of an incorrect pin or passkey. That means that the new password is in effect. Click on OK again, type the new password, and there, we have successfully paired it with our device. Now, open the app again, show available devices, connect, turn on, turn off, and disconnect. Let's check our agenda list. Turn LED on and off. Turn light bulb on and off with relay. View and change default password. Now that we're done with all of those, let's add another module. This time, an MFRC RFID reader. Alright. Let's connect some male to female jumper cables, 3.3 volts, RST or reset pin, ground, IRQ, we'll leave it dank, MISO or master in slave out, MOSI or master out slave in, SEK or serial clock, and SDA or serial data line. After that, let's connect it to the Arduino. Wow, I've been saying that a lot. 3.3 volts from the RFID to 3.3 volts of the Arduino, RST pin to pin 9, ground, let's leave the ground pin unconnected for now, MISO to pin 12, MOSI to pin 11, SEK to pin 13, and SDA to pin 10. Then transfer the relay signal pin from pin A to pin 7. Add a jumper cable to pin 8. Now, this is where the transistor will come in. Let's get the uh, 2N3904, just one. This will be the switch for our RFID module. Let's put it like this. Remember that the flat side should be facing you. Okay, so this is the emitter. Base, and this is the collector. So let's connect the Arduino ground pin to the emitter. Add the 10K ohm resistor to the base. RFID ground pin to the collector and pin number 8 to the base where the 10k ohm resistor is connected. After that, let's upload the final sketch. There it is. I basically just merged the basic Bluetooth code then RFID plus relay code for my second Arduino project. Okay, remove the RX and TX pins again. Then click on upload. After uploading, let's connect to the module again. And then let's see if the thing would work as intended. Alright, let's get our RFID card. Now, if someone for example wanted to access something that is protected by your RFID module and they don't have the correct RFID key, they can't access it, right? But, what if your RFID card has been duplicated by someone and your RFID module is just constantly active? Then they can access whatever it is your RFID is protecting. But, 
What if I told you that you have an option to make your RFID module active or inactive like a switch using Bluetooth with a custom password? See, even if I'm using the correct RFID key, I can't activate the relay because the RFID module is inactive. Now, let's turn it on. There it is. If I turn off the RFID, nothing happens. It doesn't read the card or anything. And if I turn it on, the relay is activated. Turn it off, nothing. Turn it on, something. And that's it. Honestly speaking though, I think this setup is still hackable. But if it's just going to be used around the home or office, I think it would be fine. Pretty sure that if you have some highly confidential world-ending secrets, you have a dedicated vault for that. Besides, it never hurts to add another layer of protection for the stuff that you don't want anyone to have access to. Thanks for watching and see you again next week. Maybe.